What's good, Greatness Gang? Welcome back to another reaction. And today I have a reaction for you all that's long overdue that was being requested by a few of you earlier when I started the channel. It's by a gentleman by the name of Chuck Berry. Okay, so a lot of you uh, told me to react to some of his music around the time when I did my uh, Elvis videos. Uh, a lot of you told me that he was one of the pioneers of rock and roll alongside people like Elvis and Little Richard. So I wanted to get into this and uh, be more open to learning about people who paved the way for a lot of the great artists that I enjoy and that I'm discovering now. So we're going to get into one of his songs called Johnny Be Good from 1958 and we also going to watch an interview from him and I realized as I was searching for songs to react to from him I actually heard one of his songs before in a, a film a favorite film of mine actually uh, Home Alone he has a song called Run Run Rudolph in there and as I was uh, younger watching that film I always used to uh, sing along to that song and now that I'm older I realized it was him so that's pretty cool, so we're gonna get into the video. Who is this? That's the guy. Oh, this also says this is uh, his last interview. It doesn't have a lot of details in the description, so I don't know what year this is from. <laughs> Call the father of rock and roll. Oh, yeah? Chuck Berry. Mm. Son of a God. Yeah, I heard about him. You're going to call him the father of rock Is and roll? Is position you're standing in here? <laughs> my secretary calls it the X shot because my legs are bent in, so... The have to go to the bathroom look? Uh, <laughs> same shoes? Had to be around That's a cool pose. Now, I remember this shot, you know, and a couple of other things right here, too. I guess I was maybe 12 years old when I first saw this, but when I first heard this, for me there was a kind of separation in your version of rock and roll and everybody else's. It was like, where did this guy ever hear of Beethoven and Tchaikovsky, the lyrics that you were using and everything? Seemed like there was this kind of sophistication in them in regard. It wasn't Bebopalula and Wapapaluma was lyrics going by, like bang, flying by. It wasn't somebody who was just trying to get to the end of the song. It was somebody who was actually, each line was written out. Try and tell a story, Robbie. Yeah. Really. It came from actually poetry. Poetry portraits a scene or a story, and uh, that's where my uh, lyrics uh, would originate from. Some thought that, uh, uh, from it came a story and then proceeded with uh, music or some riff that uh, reminded me of uh, some uh, situation that brought about a story, you know, mm -hmm. it come from music or come from lyrics. But poetry, you knew about poetry, you were into poetry. Very much so. Really? Very much so. Because that's kind of unusual when in that period, that rebel period and everything. I mean, poetry and sissies kind of went together. So it was a, a, a rebel against a rebel. I, idea. I don't know. Beatniks were into poetry a lot. I used to see... That's and, true. Yeah, Beatniks were into poetry. Yeah. And uh, oh, just before I turn, yeah. this picture here was uh, in my first office. The sex symbol yeah. of picture. Maybe I was 19. Young and tender and mm -hmm. innocent. You know. Oh wow, he was doing this very young. You can see, I began to learn things. Yes, the innocence is slipping away yeah, in this picture. Yeah, yeah. I began to lose money there. <laughs> <laughs> what is? How come this is burnt like okay. this? No, no. This from France started the scrapbook in '57. We had a fire at the uh, office in uh, I think '70. And it burned our scrapbook, and these are the survivals of it. Uh -huh. you see. And what we have here, my first uh, car that my sister. Uh, so the registration. Had to sign for yeah. The first one was a Ford. The second one was a Plymouth thirty-three and thirty-four. This is amazing that uh, he still has all of that. Uh, and I'm pretty sure all every single thing in that book is worth a ton of money. And that that stuff needs to be in a museum as well. 
And my, what is that? A library card. Library card, yeah. And uh, a check stub from National Tea Company. A check mm -hmm. stubs. I'm in the money here. I'm making mm -hmm. ninety dollars a week here at Fisher Body Auto. What were you doing there? Uh, sweeping the floor, that's all we could do. <laughs> they didn't care nothing about these songs there. <laughs> yeah, no songs were, no. I was singing uh, for $20 Who is this, uh, is this musician union card here? Oh, I got who? that in 54 and uh, started learning. Uh, but who is this person's name on here? Well, that's my name, uh, sort of camouflaged, that N. Uh-huh, I Baron. see. <laughs> Chuck Baron, because... Uh, I, I wasn't big, and then I didn't want to infiltrate. My dad was a deacon. Uh-huh. So you don't want the... Uh, he didn't the, want you playing this music uh, from the I devil. didn't want him to know I was <laughs> yeah. playing it, that's for sure. And uh, American Car Foundry, you see, I worked, you know. Yeah, you, you, you got paid your dues. At Barely. $21 a night playing music, you have to have another job. You know? This is uh, me here in the... And yes. Antioch Baptist Church Choir. How can you tell? Well, they all look alike there. No, yeah, no, there. all of them but you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and that's in the uh, Antioch Baptist Church Choir, and this is my eighth grade graduation. And I don't know where they all put, he's put me on the top row. In the back row, mm -hmm. too. Oh, Same yeah. spot. Uh, my, I only majored in math. I flunked all of my history. What is this, you playing the saxophone? And that was Chuck my turn Berry too. playing saxophone, believe it or not. I love the saxophone. That's one of my favorite instruments. I love some smooth jazz. Well, Johnny Johnson there inspired yeah. me to do that. Old bullet hand Johnny, huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> he had an air hammer right hand on, on treble and a dynamited left hand on bass boogie woogie. This here is also the Cosmo here. This was a going away party when Maybelline had, this was about uh, September of 1955 and I left uh, the city on August 15th, uh, 1955 to go to Gleason's Bar, which is here. Gleason's Bar, September. August 15th, 1955, Cleveland, Ohio, $800 a week behind $21 a night at the Cosmo over there. And just the week before, I was making $32 at the Frolic Ball, $14 at the Three Brothers, $60 with the whole band at the Green Dragon. The Capital Cocktail only paid $15, but Gleason's $800 a week. That's when you decided... I think this yes is for me, huh? This is the way to go. Uh, of course, you know who this guy is. And uh, Robbie, this is Muddy Waters behind yes, the mic. Yes, it is. And this is a disc jockey. I heard that name before, uh, Muddy Waters. Should I look into him as well? I don't know about him, but I heard that name a few times. Pretty cool name. He in Chicago. He's pretty big name, Al somebody. But this is Leonard Chess. Yep. In his glory, mm -hmm. with a hit maker on his hands, and this was my first and only manager. Oh yeah, four hundred pound Teddy Reed, you know, uh -huh. who saw fit to slip fifty dollars of one hundred and fifty dollar PC into his pocket, and I have to know for a fact because uh, I uh, dated the owner to the club. And she happened to mention that it was $150 PC. And I says, oh, yes, you know. So now I know I'm a manager. Clip. You learn all these things as you go. So, and you've never had a manager since? No, no. I, uh, <laughs> I couldn't get rid of him until I uh, uh. lay dead, until he did uh, sign one of my checks and, uh, and uh, endorsed it, rather. And mm -hmm. uh, then I, I asked him for that or release. And, I remember the first time I ever saw you on one of these Alan Freed shows. It was in Toronto, and you were coming through. And it was a big thing. You were by far the biggest star on the show. The show begins, and you're the first act that goes on. I thought to myself, I mean, even at that age, I thought, this is strange. Well, I, listen, how you know, come I tell you. Barry wants to go on first? Well, not, it's not wants. It's where they put you. And so All right, well, then... 
I didn't let's, know let's that cut Star ahead, was Let's on cut the ahead in time and a year later. I come, I see an Alan Freed show playing. The show opens, Chuck Berry plays first. I think, what is this? Why did you insist on opening the show? I mean, I could see in that, in that stage, they said, okay, Chuck, we want you to go on first. Then you had like two or three more hits after that. I go and see the show, you're still playing first. What was the... Uh, Okay. There had to be a method to this madness. Okay, I was a good opening act. And it didn't matter to me. And then Because everybody the, was arguing over, I'm going to close the show, I I'm going to close the show. But, but Chuck you, Berry. Because Chuck Berry didn't know that the star closes a show until maybe two years into his career when he began to look at the money that the stars got and why they close. Then he wanted to close. You know. And still, really, it doesn't really it doesn't matter today whether I close or open the show because I'm going to try to rob everybody of the starship. <laughs> I try, yeah, you know. <laughs> I thought, ah, eh, there's got to be something to this. It's something I thought. It doesn't matter. Really. I got to understand. You know, there must be some kind of special thing that he's onto that nobody else is getting or something. And yeah, in this here, if if you go on first and uh, and uh, you're not responsible for a riot if it happens or you get and uh, and you're you're finished, and if the thing breaks up on the third act, you're still finished and you're uh, remember it's a livelihood also. Did you stick around and watch the rest of the shows? Oh yeah, oh yeah, because you had to ride the bus to the next gig, and uh, and then not knowing that uh, the better position. And the better uh, status of a uh, artist to play last, you know, last impression last. Uh, I didn't know these things, you know. In fact, when I went to uh, the uh, Paramount, my first New York gig, I didn't know that you changed. You know, you do six, five, six shows mm -hmm. a day. I didn't know that you changed. And the one suit that we had was satin and had the impressions of seersucker. You know, seersucker, you old mm -hmm. enough to know what a yeah. seersucker is? And it was wrinkled, and you know, and I found out that they had irons and and uh, things to do your clothes up also, and people there to sew your clothes, all these new things, you know. And mm -hmm. and really, until I got to the Paramount, I didn't know that you got had a room to yourself, you know, like a dressing room. Mm -hmm. Well, this is almost like home. All you have to have is a car and your guitar, and you can make it in the world. You're mm -hmm. just constantly playing gigs. You have to have one every night, you know, have somewhere to sleep. When, uh, how, how come you did so much work with Alan Freed? I mean, you must have been in every one of those Alan Freed movies. Uh, well, no. Hey, all of those shows. I mean, did you... Should I check out Alan Freed as well? He has, he has music and movies. I never heard of this guy. Did you have a you know a good relationship with the guy? I mean, did you uh, have a, you know a good business relationship with him, or did you really think that he was? No, I tell you, had a good relationship with him. My record company. Oh yeah. And this was I when Paola was born, and uh, the record company gave, as I understand it, the record company gave the record to Alan Freed, and um, it was either jumping from uh, Cleveland to New York, to whatever station it was. And, uh, of course, then, uh, with a little compensation, you played a record. And I imagine that's what he got, because he played it, and it was heard. Now, the record might have had a little punch to it also, you know. And I imagine it did, by, by living all these years. And uh, that's the way he is affiliated, you know. He had that kind of power in those that. days, huh? Oh, yeah, record. And anybody yeah. did who had uh, national uh, mm -hmm. wow. And uh, so Leonard Chess tied, was tied in with him, uh -huh. among other ties. Who's this? That's my wife, the matter. And this is 1956, wow. at home. And they told me to pose at the piano. And this you, is the you, front of that, that house. Uh huh. And this is the famous pink Cadillac that uh, used to get tickets of itself. They say they wasn't giving me a ticket, but the car was <laughs> weaving in and out of the room. This is St. Louis Lambert Airport, but it was a small airport. This is a picture of... The young lovers. Uh, yeah, before, if this is in courtship year, year, year. 
Six months we Corey. And this is Ingrid. She's done an album with me, my daughter. And mm -hmm. this is uh, Melody, my second daughter. And here they are in school. And display of Sepia magazine, courtesy Sepia. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, here's one of those. I'm wondering what does he mean by his daughter did an album with him? Did she actually sing or play anything on his album? Movies. Yeah. And this is Rock, 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 the first movie I did, uh, and it was with Alan Freed. Oh, so he was in a movie. <clears throat> I don't know what the figure on it. It's something like $600. I didn't know it. A lot of money to me then. Yeah, roll over Beethoven. How far did you go in school? I mean, that's what made me think when I was a kid. I thought, God, this guy must have gone to school or something. He's talking about Tchaikovsky and using these kind of lyrics. And... Okay, I went to, um, through high school. Uh-huh. And a bit of college, but not general education. It was on cosmetology I went to college. Only for cosmetology, hairdressing. Kefir. That's interesting. Really? Kefir. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's it for that clip. Uh, pretty interesting clip knowing uh, about some of his history and some of his start. Uh, the way he speaks overall, I can already tell that he was a guy that had a lot of personality, a lot of swagger to himself. So I'm expecting some of his music to be high energy. So let's get into uh Johnny B. Good, live, 1985. I mean, 
No, oh, that was that was really good. Uh, the only thing I understand, but the only thing I wish I could have heard a better quality recording, but this was from long ago, so and it was live, so I know the recording wasn't going to be best, so I'm going to go back and listen to the official audio. But as far as the song, I wonder, uh, is this song about someone he knew personally, or is this song actually about him? Uh, as far as he's saying, guy can't do a whole lot of stuff, but he can play that guitar. So I wonder who the song was about. But uh, I like that he wasn't just singing. He's uh, showing a facial expressions, putting emotion into it, doing some crazy dance moves. I wouldn't expect anyone to be doing uh, from that long ago. I wondered, uh, <clears throat> did he have an influence over people like James Brown? Because certain stuff that he was doing, I can see maybe James Brown pulled some of his stuff from guys like him. But uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more uh, Chuck Berry. So let me know what should I react to next from this gentleman. Thank you all for the recommendation. Greatness gang, continue to subscribe to the channel, like the video, sign up for the Patreon if you would like, if you want to support the channel. I love you guys.